another reading vlog. So in this vlog, I am going to be reading Gwendolyn Kensinger's favorites. So Gwen is my friend. I've actually had the honor of meeting her in person. She lives in the same state as me. She lives on like the other side of the state, but I have met her before and I'm very excited to read some of her favorite books. Um, Gwen and I don't always have the same taste in books. Um, we're almost like the bookish yin and yang. Typically, if I like a book, it's not her favorite, and if she loves a book, it's not my favorite. These are all books that I have heard her rave about, I've heard her talk about, or she has specifically recommended to me, so I am going to try these out with you guys. So I'm gonna read three books in this vlog, and like I said, they all are some of her favorites. They, where did I, oh, they're right, they're right in front of me. The books are literally sitting right here. So the first book that I'm going to read is It Ends of Us by Colleen Hoover and I'm pretty sure I am the last person with a TikTok account to read this book. Um, I've heard a lot about this book from Book Talk, from Booktube, from Bookstagram, and I've heard Gwen talk about it. Um, I know that even more than this one she likes All Your Perfects but I couldn't get my hands on this one and um, this one was loaned to me by one of my coworkers. So I'm excited to read this one. I think it has to do with domestic abuse and that's about all I know. The people that I know that have read it either love it or hate it. So um, I'm interested to see my thoughts on it. And then the next book I'm going to read for this vlog is Cruel Beautiful World by Caroline Levitt. And Gwen has been telling me to read this book for like, nine months <laughs> at least. Um, almost a year at this point I feel like she's been telling me to read this book. Um, I don't know much about it. I know it's set in the late 60s early 70s so it has a little bit of historical fiction vibes. I really enjoy historical fiction. I know it has a little bit of an age gap romance. It has some cultish vibes so I'm really excited for that one. And then the third book I'm going to read I don't actually have physically but it's Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier and I have that one on Kindle Unlimited and I think it's on script as well. So I'll be able to read it on my Kindle and listen to it as well. Um, but I think that's the only one of these three that I was able to find the audio version for. So, but that's okay. So I think I'm going to start with It Ends With Us because this is a romance. This is like a hard hitting, like historical fiction. And then the Jennifer Hillier book is a thriller. So I kind of have a little bit of everything going on. I'm going to hop into this one. Um, the clips you just saw were of me getting ready to kind of go out on the town and we went to a couple of 
local wineries and breweries. There was a couple of um, newer breweries in my town that had just opened that I hadn't been to and a winery that was pretty close to my house that we hadn't been to yet as well. So um, yeah, we had a nice, uh, enjoyable little Saturday. It was nice and sunny and warm. And the rest of this vlog is probably going to just be me reading and doing more like adulty things. That's probably the only fun thing I'm going to do in this vlog. I think the rest of it is going to be adulty things and work and things like that. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed um, some of that Saturday in the valley wine content. <laughs> when we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy but things are finally right With you and I the future is bright with us and I fell asleep reading this last night um so it's a quick read I feel like I haven't even been reading that long and I'm already on page 130 so that's um promising I like it when I feel like I'm flying through a book um so we're following Lily and Lily uh owns a flower shop and she has this thing with the brother of her employee at the flower shop and he's a surgeon and I can't, is his name Ryle or is it Riley? I can't tell if like the E is silent or if you pronounce the E. I don't know. In my head, I've been calling him Riley. Uh, I don't really like Riley. I, I'm not sure what Colleen Hoover is trying to do. Like, are we supposed to like Riley or I don't know. There's some problematic things. Like he keeps saying like, oh, I, you know, like I want to have a one night stand with you or whatever. And she's like, no, I don't do that. And then he just keeps like pushing it. And then she's like, well, okay, I guess I'll try it. And I don't know, he just seems really weirdly pushy. And so I feel like maybe we're supposed to kind of like him, but he's supposed to be like, I don't know, he just seems problematic. So I know this is about domestic abuse and I know that Lily's father was abusive to both her and her mother. So is Riley going to become abusive? And then we're reading all of these journal entries from her, from her childhood, um, from her friend Atlas, who was like this homeless teenager that she befriended. Um, so I know that he's going to come into it somehow, um, especially since I remember reading his name on the back of the book. So I guess he's going to like come back into her life. Um, so I don't know, it seems kind of strange. Like if Riley ends up being abusive, why 
is Colleen Hoover giving us so much of the backstory and why is she trying to make us fall in love with Riley if he's going to end up being abusive or is that part of the whole thing? I don't know. Today is going to be a lot of cleaning. I have to unhook my old dishwasher because it's broken and my new one's getting getting delivered this week. I have a lot of laundry to fold and put away. Um, I need to clean my floors. I need to vacuum, just all of the maintenance stuff. I need to um, get my recycling ready to go out tomorrow. All kinds of fun adulting stuff. I also have some computer work I need to do, some stuff I need to do for YouTube. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna take you along with me on this kind of gloomy, rainy Sunday that will hopefully be very productive. You look at me like I'm crazy When I shut my feelings out You look at me like I'm different Still you stay cause you feel something real Get so lost in my moments doesn't mean I don't need you I, 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 I fell in love with your colors They kinda tell me what I'm thinking I fell in love with the way we are And the way we lose it There's something different about us And the reason why we stay Planes, they never know where we will fall Nobody can see us Still they wanna tear us apart There's something different about the way we are stars. I totally understand why people love this book. I totally understand why this is such an important story and why this could potentially help so many women. So I, I understand all of that and I feel bad not giving it like a great review, but please don't take my opinion as like this is a bad book. I definitely think that this book has an audience. I definitely think that there is a need for a story like this. However, I just felt like I wasted a lot of my time reading about 
everything leading up to, well, this is gonna be spoilery. So I wasted so much, like 200 pages learning about a man that we were then supposed to hate. And I understand that the whole point is like, you know, sometimes even people we love, you know, people can fall in love and it can be great at once and then it can become a very different relationship. And I get that. I just kind of felt like, okay, well, what was the point of taking us through all of this? And then I didn't really feel like Atlas's storyline was even necessary. Like I would have rather enjoyed a romance based on Atlas and Lily, not Ryle and Lily. I feel like Ryle could have been like a short, you know, two or three chapter stint and we could have focused on Ryle and Atlas. I don't know. I also, I didn't really like some of like the gaslighty things at the beginning of their relationship. Like there was just such red flags and I don't, I don't understand why books always make those seem like super romantic things. Like he knocked on all of these doors and just showed up at her apartment and knocked on every door until she answered it. Like that's not romantic. That's creepy. Like do not come over to my house if I don't invite you. And the things he would say were just cringy. And I don't know. I just, I didn't like Ryle's character from the get go. And so I felt like the whole time I was waiting, like, okay, what's going to happen? Like when's, you know, when is all this going to resolve itself? And then I felt like I spent 200 pages reading about a character that I felt absolutely nothing for. Like, I understand that the point was that you were supposed to get attached to Ryle, but I didn't. I felt like he was just a man child. And I feel bad because I know that this is based on Colleen Hoover's life. And so I feel bad. Like, like I said, it's not a bad book. I just didn't, I found myself not getting attached to it. And I don't know if I didn't get attached to the characters because of the writing style or because I had an aversion to Ryle from the get-go. Uh, like half of the story was told in journal entries and I never really connect very well with that. I feel like that had a lot to do with it, but I just didn't connect to the stories. I don't know. I feel bad that I didn't like it. I don't know. I'm giving it a three, which means that it's still a good book and I would still recommend it. It's just not something that I'm going to hold on to. It's not something that I'm going to ever reread. So yeah, that's all I'm going to say about it. Oh, I feel like a terrible person. But maybe I'm learning that Colleen Hoover maybe isn't for me. I've given one of her books five stars, but all the others have been three or two stars. So maybe Colleen Hoover isn't for me. That sounds terrible. Because everybody loves her. Like, what am I missing? Somebody tell me, what am I missing? What is wrong with me? Obviously, there's something wrong with me. So I'm the only person on the planet that doesn't like this book. Anyway, we're going to move on to Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier. We're gonna break up the like sad a little bit. Um, and I've already started this one. And so far, uh, the beginning was a little bit confusing. Basically, all I know is that this woman was on trial for the murder of her friend. She was um, sentenced and now she's in prison. And it very much is giving Orange is the New Black. I really, I, I enjoyed that first I mean, it was whew, a lot happened. A lot of like horrific things happened too, but I enjoyed that first part. Now I'm on to the second part and I'm not really sure who these people are <laughs> that are talking and people that are talking about. So I feel like I missed something. So maybe I need to go back. But anyways, that's where I'm at. <gasps> I'll probably end up deleting this whole thing. Maybe this vlog will never see the light of day because I feel like I'm gonna get so many hate comments for not liking a Colleen Hoover. <sighs> another update but first I wanted to see what you all think you guys are gonna have to let me know in the comments um I tried the middle part life today I have never been a middle part person I've always been a side part person my whole life and part of it's because I have those like weird cat lick things um but I've been seeing all the girls on TikTok doing it and so I decided to try it out today so I blow dried my hair with my little Revlon brush or whatever. This side, this side looks really good. I'm like happy with how this side looks. This one, this side needs a little, needs a little bit of help. But yeah, I think I, I think I'm kind of digging it. I think I'm kind of digging the middle part life, at least today. 
So we'll see, maybe this is something that I will try to do more often. We'll see. But anyways, I wanted to give you all an update and I also wanted to unbox my book of the month. So I am most of the way through Jar of Hearts. I am at 85 or so percent. Um, and I'm kind of curious to see how it's going to end. Um, but I'm liking it more now. I really didn't like it. Like the first 30%, I was very confused. I, I think that I understand what the author did by like starting with that shock factor of like her sentencing and sending Gio to prison and stuff. But like, I didn't really understand why she was in prison. I just got like the basics. It was almost like like you get the like newspaper article version and then you get like no facts, no other information. And then as we go through, it kind of like added in the information. And I also went kind of like back and forth in timelines of, um, so you're kind of following from when she was a teenager and when her friend was murdered and then you're following all the way up to the present, but it's going back and forth. And so I think the timelines kind of confused me a little bit. Um, also you have like the whole first part where she's in prison and then we go to a second part and I just felt like it was very, very disjointed. Now I've been able to kind of like piece together the story in my head, but it took me a while to figure that out. So here we have Daisy Darker. This is the first book of the month that I got. And then we have The Family Remains, which is the sequel to The Family Upstairs. But from what I've heard, you don't have to read The Family Upstairs in order to appreciate this um, present for that or whatever. But um, I'm hoping to finish Jar of Hearts tonight, and then get a good deal into Cruel Beautiful World by Caroline Leavitt, um, because I would like to finish this tomorrow. I would like to. Hopefully I can do that. I don't think it's that long. Pages of Cruel Beautiful World by Caroline Leavitt and I'm liking it. I'm kind of interested where it's gonna go. So Lucy, uh, Lucy lives with her sister Charlotte and they're raised by um, their aunt Iris and Lucy decides to run away with her English teacher who she's fallen in love with and they move from Boston to rural PA and it's not panning out the way she thought like he's not he's not really like well he is controlling but it's very like subtle control very subtle like gaslighting you can definitely tell that lucy is 16 because the way she thinks about like their life and the world and how it's going to be when they live together is very naive and very juvenile like she thinks like, oh, once we move away, like we're gonna have this happy little house. We're gonna spend all this time together. But like, honey, he still needs to have a job and you're still 16, so it's still illegal. So it's not like you can just go gallivanting around the countryside together. So we were following that storyline for a while. And then now we've gone back and we've learned about Iris's past, the aunt. And so then I imagine that next we'll probably see Charlotte's point of view, like her background and things like that. So I'm interested to see how it pans out. Um, I don't really enjoy Charlotte as a character and I don't really enjoy Lucy as a character, but I do like Iris's character. Uh, she has a lot of depth to her. So we'll see. I'm gonna keep working on today, reading physically as well as the audiobook on Scribd. Um, and I will let you know when I have, probably when I've finished the book. I, I need, I better finish the book today. Like I need to finish this book today. This vlog has spanned the course of a whole week. So <laughs> I need to finish it today so I can edit it and get it up. <laughs>
so that I can edit it and get it up for you guys. So I have finished Cruel Beautiful World. And so that makes all three of the books that I plan to read for this reading vlog done. I have read them all. So recapping, Colleen Hoover, three stars. We've already talked about that. Not going to harp on that anymore. Jar of Hearts. I think mm, I'm a little bit torn with Jar of Hearts. I'm not sure if I want to give it three stars or four. It's kind of genre defying. So I think for right now, I'm going with three and a half stars. Um, I didn't like how disjointed some of the POVs were. I felt like it was hard to maneuver a timeline. Um, I felt like there was too many subplots going on at once. Um, it was a little bit hard to follow, um, but I did like the ending. I like how it was all resolved. And I really like how you left not really knowing who the villain was. And I kind of can appreciate that because sometimes the villain is right in our backyard. Sometimes the villain is the person we think we're in love with. Sometimes the villain is in us. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna land on three and a half stars for that one. And then for Cruel Beautiful World, I think I'm gonna rate this four stars. So I went into this thinking it was going to be a domestic violence age gap historical fiction story, but it really ended up being a lot more about just the ugly aspects of life and how some things in life just are not fair and just don't turn out how we expect them to. And we have to do with that what we can to make the best life we can for ourselves in the midst of things not always going our way. I thought this was going to be about Lucy and her relationship with the teacher, but it really became people trying to make the best out of shitty circumstances. And it was sad, it was heartbreaking, it was beautiful. So I, I really can appreciate this. Um, it got a little slow at times. I appreciate all of the atmospheric explanation about what was going on during that time. I appreciated the strong female characters that really were victims of a society that is not a friend to a female. So I would say that overall, this was a successful reading vlog. I have a three, a three and a half, and a four. So there you go. I think I said this at the beginning, Gwen and I don't always see eye to eye as far as books go, but overall, these all three even though I didn't love the Colleen Hoover book, I would still recommend it because I think that it definitely has an audience and I see why there is so much hype around that book. It just wasn't for me. And then same thing with Jar of Hearts. I think that you really have to pay attention going into it. I almost felt like I needed like those strings connecting like who goes where. This one is also, I feel like it's genre defying because it has a little bit of thrilling aspect to it. It has a little bit of culty vibes, a little bit of historical fiction and a little bit of romance. So it really is a whole lot in one book. And I think a lot of people can appreciate it for what it is. So that is everything for reading Gwen's favorite books. So this is a series that I'm gonna be doing on my channel, reading booktubers favorites. So check back next month to see who else's favorite books I decide to try out. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.